If you have running shoes that are just a little too big and may be causing you problems, stick around because I have three tips to help make those big shoes feel a little smaller. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are new, my name is Joshua, and the idea for this video came from this shoe right here. So quick story time, I bought this shoe, the A6 Glide Ride 2, in my usual size, a US men's 10 and a half, got the shoe, tried it on at home, everything felt great. So then I went on my first five mile run and three or four miles in, started to realize something just did not feel right. It almost felt like the shoe was just a little too big and almost like my heel was just gonna slip out the back and I wasn't sure. So I got home, checked out the shoe, tried some different things and realized this shoe may just be a little too big for me. Only problem is the return and exchange for ASICs and most major brands don't allow for you to return a shoe that has been used at all. So with that predicament, I got online and looked at ways that I could utilize my large shoe to feel just a little smaller and make it feel just right. Which led me to making this video to help you so you don't have to go looking around like I did. And like I said, I found three tips that I believe will help you. Two of these tips dealing with the overall volume of the shoe and making the volume less or just creating less dead space. And then the last one being a tying or lacing technique. And so for reference really quick to the volume I was just speaking of, volume of a shoe is basically all this space here from the midsole. Some shoes are obviously designed different with the midfoot, ankle collar, and then the forefoot all being a little different and creating a different type of volume, which is why you can sometimes run into that issue of a shoe being the same size you always buy but being a little too small or a little too big. So with this shoe, the volume was just a little too much and that will lead me to my first two tips which are trying to help reduce that volume. And so the first tip for helping reduce that volume and make the shoe feel a little smaller is wearing thicker socks. So when I tested out the shoe and when I ran in the shoe, I actually wore this Asics PR Lite sock. It is a really thin sock, like insanely thin perfect for racing or summer running. The only problem is with shoes where maybe you have a little too much volume, thin socks really do not help make that volume fill out and make the shoe feel like it actually fits. You can get some of those issues that I was just talking about, about feeling like heel slippage, kind of just like your foot sliding around in the shoe. I did have a thicker sock, the Saucony Ventilator Sock. This sock is definitely like a cool weather, cold weather running sock and is a lot thicker than that sock I just showed from Asics. As soon as I put this sock on and put it in the shoe, the feeling of the shoe completely changed. The shoe felt way better. It felt like it was a lot snugger. I still had a decent amount of room in the toe box. Nothing felt like it was too tight. It just felt right. And so my tip for this one is if you have thicker socks, try and wear them with that shoe that feels just a little too big. You could also go to a running store and actually feel the socks or look for cool weather, cold weather running socks. If you don't have the ability to be able to get thicker socks or you're unsure, you could also stack socks. So if you wanna wear more than one pair, so let's say you only have those thin ASIC socks, you could try stacking one, two, maybe three pairs of socks. I really wouldn't recommend stacking too many, but you could stack two pairs or three pairs to try and see if that helps reduce some of that volume. Now the second tip, which also deals with volume in the shoe, is replacing the insole with a thicker insole. Now for those of you wondering, the insole is actually this piece right here where you see the, the neon Asics. You can go and buy thicker insoles. A lot of times people actually do this for uh, added comfort or other things that they may be dealing with. Now of the two options in reducing volume, I do recommend doing the sock over the insole. The only reason I recommend the sock over the insole is that I've bought insoles in the past from a third party and typically it's just this generic really long insole and then you're supposed to like measure it out and then cut it out and the edges were always jagged and the insole never really stayed perfectly in place like a manufactured insole would for the shoe and size that you bought. So in terms of like trying to decide which one helps fill the volume better and is like a safer, I guess, option. The socks are less likely to cause problems where an insole may slip or move around during your run. There's a chance that you might have something happen, like what happened to Kipchoge and his run. So you don't want that happening to you. So that's why I would suggest the sock. 
But if you don't want to wear thicker socks or you don't want to stack up socks, your next best option would be to change out the insole. Also, one thing I do want to note here, if you Google how to make a shoe smaller, like if it's a shoe is too big, you will see there's a recommendations for like inserts in the heel, do not do anything where you're doing an insert like up in the toe or the heel. For running specifically, do not purchase anything to help reduce the space in your shoe that has the potential to move, cause blisters and unnecessary rubbing. Your best bet is to do an insole where it runs the length of the shoe and is not just an insert that, like I said, has a really high probability, especially when you're moving at faster paces to start moving and start causing issues and just kind of derail your whole run. All right, and now the third tip actually has to do with lacing your shoe. So if you are actually looking at your shoe, you will see that you have an extra eyelet here. You can see this neon circle. That is an extra eyelet. And typically when you try and lace it, if you just lace it naturally, the lace is never long enough and it ends up sitting on the tongue in a place that can just be uncomfortable. So here is a lacing technique you can use to help create a better lockdown and help prevent some of that heel slippage that I was talking about. So what you actually wanna do with the lacing is take your lace, loop it back on the same side eyelet. So you wanna pull it through so that you create this loop that you see here. All right, so now that I've run the lace on the same side eyelet on both sides, you'll see I have these loops. Then what you want to do is actually pull your lace through, leave a little bit of space because what you're going to want to actually do is take this lace and run it through that loop you have created. And so as you can see, I have the lace running through the loop. And what this allows for is one, enough lacing material to come back through and actually tie the shoe and have enough lace to tie it. And then it also allows for it to sit on a more comfortable spot on your ankle and the tongue of the shoe. What this also does, which I can show here really quick, is as I pull this lace, you'll notice that it'll pull and cinch this down. So the front part of the heel counter, it'll actually help cinch it down more. So you can already see, like, obviously I'm pulling this a little too tight, but you can see how it's pulling this and it's in an exaggerated motion to show that it's actually cinching down this part of the ankle collar. So what this lacing allows for is cinching down this ankle collar to really help lock in your ankle and your heel through the backside of the shoe so that you have that feeling of heel slippage. It's completely removed when you tie it this way. So if, like I said, you try and fill the volume out of the shoe and the shoe just feels like it may slightly be a little too large, you can try this lacing system of doing the loop through that last eyelet to help lock down the ankle collar a little better and help with, like I said, heel slippage in the back of the shoe. All right, and that is it for my three tips on how to make a running shoe that feels a little too big just feel right. If you guys like this video, found it helpful and or informational, please do not forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment below letting me know if you have any tips to make a shoe that's just a little too big, feel smaller. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get updates on when I'm uploading my next video. Thanks for watching.